Welcome back to Tie and That Guy. I'm Wes Chatham, and this is my goodbye. Good, good buddy. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. This is my goodbye. Go fuck yourself, Ty Frank. By the way, <laughs> uh, I have to be very careful about the hugger, lover, snuggler thing because I don't know what happened or where my. So we, I have a new like studio thing that I that I set up, which you will see when you come visit me. I was in here doing some work. I was building like these uh, these uh, backgrounds, and Nash comes in here, and so the headphones and the mic and everything was there. And Nash came and sat in the chair. He put the headphones on, put the thing, uh, and he goes, "Welcome back to Tyna Guy." I'm with you. <laughs> and he started doing, and I was like, "Whoa, where did That's you? That's awesome. Where the fuck did you?" I was like, "Where did you hear that?" And he kind of like had a coy smile. And I think like, I don't, I, I, I don't know if he's listening outside the door when we're doing the podcast or if he's found it on YouTube. Hopefully, I think we got the parental stuff and I'm pretty sure we would be filtered out by parental, right? Yeah. So I was like, and then we're I just very became R-rated. horrified because, yeah. And I just, I just, be, I just was horrified because I'm like, dude, all the stuff we talk about, like all the, you know, the bad language and the stuff like, you know, my, my poor kid is hearing that shit. So uh, he doesn't seem. It doesn't seem. You're to still him. my. He doesn't care. You're still my hugger, snuggler, good time lover. But you know, I don't want to confuse my son. <laughs> I don't think Dad, he's confused. What, I think he knows exactly he's what's your going on. Hugger and snuggler and good time lover. What, what do you mean by that? All right. So uh, Joseph, uh, basically, professor or producer Joseph. Um, he's a professor in some some areas of study. He said, basically said we suck, so we need more yep. segments, and we need to spice it up a little bit. So this next one, this first thing that we're going to talk about is called Pillow Talk, Wes Chatham and Ty Frank. Or, or Pillow Talk <laughs> with Tigger and Midnight. <laughs> Tigger and Midnight. <laughs> um, so what do we do with Pillow Talk, Joseph? <laughs> <laughs> we're supposed to talk oh, yeah. about Hold upcoming on. stuff, I'll, I'll right? I'll bring up the talking points. Okay, yes. I, but first we got to throw our shout out to our man Sheehan for getting his green card. And yeah, if you don't I, remember, I, I, I love the good. sound of that. Our man Sheehan, that's awesome. Our man Sheehan getting that green card, baby. Welcome yeah. to the U.S. of A. America. Yeah. God damn it! You know, try, he, try to avoid he, he the mass shootings. With us. But other than that, it's pretty good. Oh, they're far and few between. Um, you mean uh, like you mean like every day? <laughs> yeah, it's like you know. Sometimes it skips a day. It's not every day. Other but than he that, he hung out with good. us a little bit on our on our Patreon Q and A, and we had a good time. And I still remember. I laughed so hard when he <laughs> when it was over, and he was he was uh, about to log out, but he he was he was stuck, and he didn't, he didn't know how to know log how to out. out. And he was like, <laughs> and he goes, and he was just sitting there, and, and you and I and everybody, we were just talking and hanging out, and he goes. I don't know how to leave here. <laughs> uh, but I can he tell right away. He was trapped. Yeah, I can tell right away he was a good, he's a good guy. Um, and his wife sent us an email, and, uh, and we're happy for you, buddy. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations, man. I feel like the country got like one 300 millionth of a percent better because yeah, we added, because he, because he, we he added a, Sheehan, so that raised our, our national level. Yeah, Sheehan was a smart cookie, if I remember yeah. right. He had yep. some kind of smarty pants job, which a lot of our listeners are smarty pants. So I bet it's like grading on a chalkboard to hear me talk. <laughs> really? I thought, I thought we appealed mostly to uh, unemployed people, unemployed drunks. Isn't that our core audience? <laughs> uh, that, no, that would be my family. Um, <laughs> I think our core audience is a little bit different. Okay, so we, uh, and then final expanse recap with special guests. Oh, yeah. So we're oh. coming up on, on our. Very last tie in that guy episode, uh, recapping an expanse episode. We're on the last episode, and so we decided to do something a little special. Joseph suggested it, uh, so we're going to bring uh, Narain Shankar and Daniel Abraham on to talk about the last episode. So we'll have the whole gang to talk about it. So that that's kind of fun. I mean, with that many people, though, it's just chaos. But hopefully, it'll be enjoyable chaos. We have another Q and A coming up. With the patrons, we really enjoyed that. And uh, when is that going to be, uh, Joseph? On the, oh, 20th. he says on the 20th. And we're going to do the live talk, right, where they come on. and Yeah, and- we're going to have some of them come on, and then we're going to have, like, the, the pre-done questions as well. Great. So uh-huh. we get, I, I'm thinking, like, three to five patrons. We're going to, like, kind of, like, have a, a, a random drawing to see who can, who can come on. 
Make and sure anybody have, uh, who's coming on live is wearing pants because we don't need to see no dick pics. Uh, that that is a good good point. I will make yep. sure. But you guys, it's optional. I don't yeah. know. I'm not. I'm not yeah. pure. Now, Wes and I never I'm wear not, pants. I d- yeah. <laughs> and I don't think we should mandate that on <laughs> on people that come on the show. We don't. We're not authoritarian on here, right? This is come as you are. This is absolute uh, expression, freedom of expression. Express yourself. So Wes says um, yes. He wants dick pics. All right. Well, I mean, we there's we have okay. I'm not even touching that. It, no, actually, um, uh, talking about dick pics is is going to tie in well with our topic today. So okay. Oh, and 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 Joseph wants me to uh, mention that I'm going to be out on the road driving around the country for a few weeks. So I will may not not be here doing the live shows with Wes. He's he's going to have some guests, but I am going to be in the Atlanta area. So I'm going to go over to Wes's house, and he and I are going to hopefully get to record a bunch of episodes when we're in the same studio together, which will be fun. Yeah, we're going to we're going to stockpile a bunch and then yep. you know, oh, and, I don't know. And by the way, if you're listening to this and you think that's a, a a perfect time to come rob my house, that would be a mistake. I have a house sitter staying here and she has access to a wide variety of firearms. So, uh this is not a this is not a please rob me moment. <laughs> is that are we done with the pillow talk by tying that guy? You're never done with pillow talk, baby. <laughs> yes. <laughs> What are we talking about today, Ty? Uh, we're talking about one of the better horror movies to come out in the last decade. It was a real surprise for everybody, I think. Um, it follows a little, not super high budget, not a lot of like huge name stars in it at the time, and just came out and just exploded on the scene. So I really, I'm a huge fan of this movie. Yep. And, you know, you say exploded on the scene, and it did get a lot of attention. You know, if you go online and, and start reading about it and researching, like I was researching before we did this podcast, it didn't have the impact that a lot of other horror movies have had, like an Annabelle or something like that. It's still, for me, I think it could be a modern classic. I think it's still a little under the radar mm. for, for how great it is. I, I really, really love this film. There are people who liked Annabelle. That's the most shocking thing I've heard today. Go on the, all the horror message boards and horror movies and stuff. And then, you know, did you ever see uh, Candyland? Did you ever watch Candyland? Yeah, I love Candyland. Yeah. Um, you mean Candyland? Well, no, 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 no. Yeah, okay. I'm thinking of Candyman. I have not yet yeah. seen Candyland. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll, 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 save, we'll save that talk. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's one I definitely need to see. Um, yeah, I, sorry. I, I misheard you. I thought you were saying Candyman. I yeah. do love Candyman. But, but it follows. And, one thing that It Follows does and, and understands is that there's a lot. Of, I mean, there's tons of horror movies that come out every year. And it's almost like, have you ever seen a cover band and they're playing a song that you love, but it just does. It's just not. They're just hitting the same notes. They're yeah. just hitting, but it doesn't have the force underneath that the, that the, well, the yeah, original. There's no, like, there's no. There's no. Yeah, you're right. It's just it's repetition without the charisma, without the spirit. Yes. Yeah. And. I really think because every now and then you'll get a good a get out. Every now and then you'll get a uh, it follows because it understands that it's about something. It's yeah. it's working on multiple different levels. Yeah. And there is the the fun, scary, you know, sexual, all that stuff. And then there's that's just the tip of the iceberg, and it just gets deeper and deeper. And there's layers and layers, and it's about something. It's saying something. You know, and and so when you leave it, because it's so rich and it's so complex that you continue thinking about it. And it follows as one that I I think about all the time. You know, you think about, man, if if that happened to me or like, what would I do? or What were the rules? Do you want to give a quick setup of the synopsis as we go in case somebody hasn't seen it? Yeah. Well, I mean, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen this movie, you should stop this and go watch it and then come back. It's a great movie. It's a horror film in which the premise is that there is a some kind of supernatural killer that will stalk a person until they're killed. And the only way to get rid of that supernatural killer is to pass it to somebody else through sex. And this killer will just sort of kill people and just move through that person's sexual history, killing everybody in their sexual history, unless the person that it's going after has sex with somebody else, in which case they hand off the killer to that person. And... It was a really weird premise, and it worked surprisingly well, and it has some truly horrifying moments in it. Minka Monroe plays the the lead character, Jay, yeah. and Jay is 
dating this really nice guy, uh, <laughs> they like Hugh. And I thought the setup is really great in this film in, in terms of setting up the mystery and the suspense. They go to a theater. Jay is, you know, high strung, a little bit nervous. Um, well, he isn't at first. When you first see him and they're waiting in line, I mean, this is just a, a nice date. You know, this is a sweet little date that they're going on. And the first sign that something is amiss and also kind of stating the theme of the movie is they're playing a game. And I think this is really smart and creative. But the game is, is like, if you see somebody that you would rather change places with, then you, you, look, you, you, gaze, you look through the crowd and you see somebody you'd rather change places with. And then the other person has to guess it. And you say, OK, you're right. And here's why I want to change places. So uh, Hugh chooses somebody. She goes through. She can't figure it out. And then she's like, all right, who is it? And he said it was this little boy with his parents. And she's like, why would you want to be, you know, why would you pick that? Why would you want to be a little boy? And he says, because look how carefree he is. He has right. no idea of like the darkness in the world. And he's free of that. And for me, this is a lot about what this movie is about. A lot, you know, I think if you just hear the synopsis and you just hear people are like, oh, it's a movie, you know, be because horror historically has had that virginal, like the first person who had yeah. sex on Halloween and then they die and then the, the last virgin is yep. surviving. They did have like this kind of moral judgment. This movie's way richer, way more complex, and it doesn't have that take on sex. It might look like that on the surface, but it's so much deeper than that. Yeah, it definitely and, doesn't have a puritanical view of sex. I, yeah, and I, I hope I didn't give that impression with, with my synopsis. No, but, I don't think you did at all. But no, yeah. the... You're right, because you, you, you get through that layer, and then you're like, oh, it's, it's a movie about deadly venereal diseases. It's a movie about AIDS, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But it's not that either. And mm -hmm. as you keep going through these layers, like the obvious answers for what this movie is saying, you, go, you keep going past them to these increasingly more sophisticated stories that it's telling. It's not just a really obvious story. It's not just about if you have sex, you should die. It's not just about oh, uh, a venereal disease that kills everybody you've had sex with. It's, it's much deeper than that. You know, it's almost like I have two kids, and there's almost like a, a moment when you, there's a, a moment in, in your life when you're a kid where you're a bit protected yeah. from the darkness in the world. And, and the whole, for most kids, you know, and for most lives, but the kind of whole collective work together to keep that from you. There's certain movies you see, there's certain people you hang out with, there's certain you know, there's certain language you try, they try to avoid. And so you have this moment of like, when you're in innocence, true innocence, and you watch them play, there's a, there's a freedom and a carefree. And I think that sex in this movie is just another threshold passer into adulthood where then yeah. you become, you acknowledge that death is coming. Yeah. That it's unstoppable. Yep. And that there is darkness in the world. And what's interesting is that, well, I, I'll just continue with the premise. So she keeps, she goes on a series of dates with this guy, super nice guy. They're in the theater and they're continuing playing the game. And I loved this moment where he, he, she chooses somebody and he goes, oh, it's the lady with the yellow dress at the front thing. And she looks and she's like, what are you talking about? He goes, the lady right there, the yellow yeah. dress. I get it. And she's like, I, I don't know what you're talking about. And he does this here. And then he freaks out. And that reaction. So immediately you're like, what the fuck is going on? It's so spooky. And then he yeah. grabs her and they got to get out of the theater and they, you know, they take her. She has a conversation with her friend. They're the, she's debating. She's like, look, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to have sex with him. And she's not a virgin by the way. So yeah. it, it kind of dispels that virgin thing. So they end up having a date. It's a magical date. They go to the lake, they drink beer, you know, they, uh, they're parked to the side, they have sex and She's leaning out the door and she's playing with a little plant. And it's so, it's almost like the threshold of her youth and she's passing through it. And she talks about when she was a little girl, how she always wanted to be at this stage where she could go on dates and with cute boys. And yeah. so it's almost like she's acknowledging, oh, I'm here. I'm growing up now. This is the moment where I'm growing up. And then all of a sudden he grabs her fucking hair, pulls her back and then puts chlorophyll over her mouth and, and she passes out. <laughs> and you're like, oh yeah, welcome to adulthood. Right. Welcome to the real yeah, world. Welcome to date rape. <laughs> yeah, welcome to date rape. Yeah. Well, it's not really date rape because he already they already had sex. Right. You know, and it was a it's, consensual it, it, I sex. Mean, I mean that in the sense of a 
a violation from somebody you're supposed to be able to trust. Yeah. Right. And that's, and you know, one thing that's harsh about this movie is the violation of Jay, the main character. Like the things that she goes through is just horrible. But she comes to, and this guy, Hugh, to me, Hugh is one of the most terrifying characters in the thing because he likes Jay. It's clear that he likes her. And he seduces her. He has sex with her. And then he's like, but listen, okay, I'm not, I, I, I'm going to help you, okay? I'm not going to hurt you. Yeah, I'm gonna, yeah. Let, now so, let me tell you how to yeah. give this to somebody else so they can die. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so look, here's the thing. There's a, I passed this demon on to you, and it's going to chase you, and here are the rules, and here's the thing, and aren't I a good guy for doing this thing? Yeah. And I'm like, you, how could you knowingly do that to somebody? Because he how wanted could you to live. Knowingly, because he wanted to live. He wanted to live. You know, yeah. but yeah. And so he, then he takes her, and then it. So it's also about abuse, you know, and, and the way that he takes her and just discards her in the street, and she hits the ground, and her friends surround her, and they come up there. But and what did you think about the setup of him explaining the rules of the ghost? And I mean, there's no way to do that that it doesn't feel like an exposition dump because it is. Yeah. Yeah, But I think the story is weird enough that I don't know how else you would have gotten that information across. I think, yeah. I think the writers found the way that they could... Because you, you have to understand that in order to tell the story that they're about to tell. So without that information, the story won't make any sense. And they know that. And it's not like a story that they could imply because it's something people already know about. Mm -hmm. I mean, like you, you don't ever have to say the word vampire in a vampire movie. Everybody knows yeah. what a vampire is, right? You could just like, oh, right. he's drinking blood. And then every, the audience goes, oh, he must be a vampire, right? With right, this right. thing, with this demon, we've never seen anything like it before. So no. there's no way for them to imply it without openly stating what it is. And that's what they had to do. And I think, you know, one thing is this movie does not feel the need to over-explain any fucking thing. No, but and, the premise it does. The initial premise yeah, it has to explain it, but that. It, and it, that's yeah. what I'm saying. And it yeah. has to... But they do it. Listen, if you're going to have a, an exposition scene, do it in a warehouse where she's just waking up and she's tied out. You're right. And there's this, <laughs> this zombie ghost naked woman that's just slowly walking towards right. him. And he's like, OK, here's the thing. Da -da, and he's running around with the, the wheelchair and like the cinematography. And we'll, yep. we'll get into that. And, you know, with the wheelchair. And he's like, OK, here's the thing. This thing's going to come after you. This, and she's like, what? You know, she's yep. like completely fucking out of it. And then, so that is an entertain. You were engaged in the exposition because yeah. you're like, I need to know who the fuck that lady is, how much danger she is. And wait, I thought you were going to kill her, but I guess yep. you're not a killer. And oh, now, but, but you think you're looking out for her and you're kind of more fucked up because you think you're doing something right. And, and it, you know, the movie does that really well. Yeah. And, you know, that, that's one of the jokes in screenwriting is if you have an exposition dump, have people talk to each other in the middle of a gunfight. Because then it doesn't feel right. like an exposition dump. It feels right. like a gunfight where people are having a conversation. You know, and, yeah. and famously, Game of Thrones had the um, sex position steam. You know, somebody's doing exposition, but right behind him are two prostitutes people making out with each other, right? <laughs> I mean, so yeah. it, that is kind of a joke version of it, but you're right. Yeah. In this case, it Should works. Should we do the podcast with two people fucking behind us? I bet our numbers would it. go up. <laughs> I bet our numbers would go up. It's interesting that you bring up that one of the stories that this seems to be telling and I agree with you, and I think it is a much more interesting story than, oh, it's just virgins, you know, is sex, you should die as punishment for sex, or, or it's, it's an AIDS metaphor. Much more interesting than that is exactly what you mentioned, which I was going to bring up, but you're, you're smart and you came up with it faster, which is the idea of sex as a gateway into adulthood. It is, adulthood inevitably ends with death, Right. There's a line in The Crow. Do you ever see The Crow? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the one with Brandon yeah. Lee. Um, mm -hmm. The guy, I've, I can't remember the actor's name. It's, I think it's Michael something, but he's got the long hair and he's got that really gravelly voice. Mm -hmm. um, there's a line he says in there where he says, uh, my daddy always used to say that uh, childhood is over the moment you know you're going to die. And that, that, that being the transition moment, that moment yeah. you go, oh, I'm going to die someday. That is the end yeah. of your childhood. That's the end of innocence. Right. Yes. And this yeah. movie is a metaphor about that. It is yes. that moment of, hey, I'm an adult and I can do the things I want now. And this inevitably ends with my death. Yeah. The awareness. Well, she of that. reads she reads that Dostoevsky quote from the prince yeah. on her phone where wounds distract us with pain 
from the ultimate pain, which is death. Right. But you, let's talk a little bit about the setting, which I think is one of the things that, are re- that really makes this movie special. And David Robert Mitchell, who wrote and directed this movie, to me, because of this movie, I didn't see Underneath the Silver Lake, but I, I did, did watch. I, I have watched that. What, did you, what were your thoughts on that? It, it doesn't entirely work. I, I liked the ambition of it. I thought it was very creative. Mm-hmm. But it, 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 for me anyway, I'm not saying, I'm, this is not a, an objective opinion. This is just my subjective mm-hmm. opinion. It didn't entirely work for me. Yeah. I, I admired its ambition. I did see The Myth of the American Sleepover, and that was his first movie. And there is a, it's about, it's a coming of age story, but it's like, it's a way, it, you know, it's a sweet, you know, s- story is not anything like this but it's come of it coming coming of age and he has a style a naturalism between the actors he's really good with the actors so kind of like the interactions between jay and her two sisters and paul the guy that's in love with her you know it's a movie about friends and come of an age you know it's and so it, it's 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 well done it's really well done and then this movie i think is a, is a modern classic i did not see silver lake because i read the script and then i heard through friends that worked on it that it wasn't, and I was like, ah, oh, man, I have, I have so much hype for this director. And I think for me, watching It Follows, I was excited about him like I was when I watched Sixth Sense with M. Night Shyamalan or Get Out with Jordan Peele. And it's because I was like, oh, this is fresh. This is creative. It's fresh. And one of the things that I love about this is how it is set up. And he talks about he got the idea um, because he had this reoccurring nightmare of this thing just walking towards him and uh, just slowly walking towards him. It's always coming. It's never going to stop. And eventually it's going to get to him and he can outrun it, but eventually he's going to get caught sleeping. And it was an anxiety dream and his parents sure. are going through a divorce and certain things like that. And so he created that feeling and emotion within this movie. And so this movie is a dream that turns into a nightmare. Right. right. You know, if the, like her in the pool and the water is the sign of transition into the gateway. And but what's so great about this film is time is erased from it. It, it almost takes place in a parallel universe, which is very dreamlike. Right. It has this has its own rules. You don't know what time period it is. Yeah. I remember when I first started watching this, I was like, is this a, something's all, is it a different country? Is it? And then you look and you're like, oh, there's like a car from the 70s. There's. You know, like, is this 70s, is this 80s? But then she has, a, like, a 2012, you know, uh, Acura. Yeah. Um, so you're like, oh, this is so smart. There's no cell phones. There's only that, like, e-reader clam thing. All the movies, you can't date it through movies. It's all horror movies and certain things like that. So I find that is genius. It's like, because now you're living in dream logic that's yeah. so subtle yep. that all it does is affect the atmosphere. It, yeah, it just kind of disconnects emotional... it from reality just a little bit. Yeah. Yes. And it affects your emotional connection yeah. to the film. And it's got that disaster piece, fantastic score. You were probably a fan of disaster piece because all the video games, correct? The, the guy that did the score for the film. Is he a video game music guy? Yeah. Oh. He's a video game guy. That's how uh, David Robert Mitchell discovered him. He was oh. playing a video game. He's like, fuck, I love the way that this sounds. You know what game way- it was? I, I don't know. He, okay. he said it, but I'm, I don't, I'm not familiar with the games. But, um, I was, but when I read that, I was like, oh, I bet Ty, you know, if, even if, if I'm not drawing a connection now, I bet if you went back and read the games, you would probably know the games yeah, yeah. and know. Yeah. Well, stuff. you know, I, I, I guess I didn't pay that much attention to the score, which is actually good because yeah. the score shouldn't draw attention to itself. It should be, you know, the mood and feel of the movie. So it doesn't draw attention to itself. I'll have to go back and, and rewatch it and really pay attention to the score this time. Yeah, the score, I'm a, you know, I downloaded that score right away. I listen to it all the, the time. I'm a massive fan of the score because when you first hear it, when you first, you're like, oh, is this an 80s, you know, that thing? But then it, it, it transcends that. Hmm. And then you're like, oh, no, this is dream. This is like a, you know, it has this methodic, m- melodic kind of vibe to it, but then it can just be so harsh and, cr- you know, it's like, and it's, it's like a sounds that you haven't heard before and the yeah. way that it, 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 the mood of dread and anxiety and suspense is phenomenal. And he really, and this guy, you know, the guy ended up doing a lot of stuff too. So the way that they set that up and then it's kind of like really this dreamlike experience in 
and it's representing the the innocence of the American suburb of a different time, yeah. right? Or what the what the suburb aspires to be, also the innocence of childhood. So those are two things that I think are really powerful, but also how he eliminates the adult presence in the film. So, you know, I and I went back because I, I remember watching it and then thinking about the parents, but when you go back and watch it again, I think one adult says like two lines. Yeah. It, you know, his, her mother's there, but you never see her mother's face. It's always off. And her mother's drinking wine. You, obviously, your mother's an alcoholic. And then, you know, there's the comments that they make of like, you know, is, you know, is your mom going to be like, don't worry, my mom's not going to wake up. You know, like mm. there's like a, a, you know, she's had her bottle of wine, you know, she's had her. And I read the script for this and the script really kind of goes more into like, they'll make comments of like, you know, she's had her bottle of wine. She's not, you know, waking up or anything like that. Mm. So the parents don't exist. And David Robert Mitchell was, you know, he, he's a big John Carpenter fan and he was heavily influenced by John Carpenter. I, Even I that, mean, open that is shot. clear watching the movie. It is. Now, I'm not a person who thinks that if you have influence, that that means you stole anything. I don't think you stole anything. No, but he clearly I, no, no, no. was influenced, and yeah. and in all the best ways. Like he, yes. he, his, he used all the best influences. I think from Carpenter in crafting this movie, and I really, I, I that's part of the reason I love it so much. Is it felt like watching a great Carpenter movie? Yeah, I mean that's a good point to bring up because in in the world that we're in. When you say, like, it's almost a compliment. Like, you talk to people and they're like, oh, I, you know, I, I took that from this project. I took that from this. Yeah. I took that. It's a very common thing. And what, you know, when it's done right, it's like David Robert Mitchell being inspired by a filmmaker that he loves. Yeah. And then that inspiration shines through his own talent yeah. to create something new in his own voice. And so that, that's a, a special thing and it, and it pays respect to the filmmakers before that. And I, I find that if filmmakers yeah. don't do that. Well, it, and anybody it, who claims that they don't is lying. Yes, because they're we, lying. Anybody who makes anything creatively also consumes that thing creatively, right? And it, you cannot help but be influenced by the things that you consume. And you'll like some things better than other things. And you can't help but want to replicate the feeling that you got from the thing you liked in your own work. And, and it, there, there's... There are people like, well, it's not original then. Well, like those people are idiots because nothing's, there's nothing, nothing is nothing's original. Nothing's new under the sun, no, baby. No, that's right. Like, there's I mean, nothing. Yeah. Every, story, every story now, I can, like every story that people do now, I can find you a section of the Epic of Gilgamesh that tells the same kind of story. And that, that predates written language. Is the Epic of Gilgamesh is one of the oldest stories that we are aware of that man has been telling. And, you know, like even when you... The first day of acting class, they'll tell you steal. Yes, if you, <laughs> steal and steal often because that's what the, there's nothing new under the sun. The stories have all been told. Yeah. You can shine the story through your point of view for what you want to say, and that will make it fresh and authentic because you're telling the truth from you. But it's been done several, several times before. Yeah, and you know it's like you think about go read Ray Bradbury. Something wicked this way comes. And then go read Needful Things. Right. <laughs> All right. You right. know, and Stephen King is my hero, you know, and you go, you go read Needful Things and you're like, oh, OK. I, and then I when you bet if you had a conversation with Stephen King, he would be the first to admit that he yes. is heavily influenced by Ray Bradbury. He'd be right, the first right. to admit that. I think I read somewhere, too, a long time ago that he might have written a screenplay for Something Wicked This Way Comes. Oh, uh, back, I think way back he was, in the day? Yeah, way back in the day. They were trying to make that movie. This is how long they were trying to make that movie. Gene Kelly was going to be the star of the original idea right. of when they were in it. Like that. So that, that movie's been around. And Ray Bradbury, I think, wrote the, he wrote the, no, he wrote the screenplay first to make a movie. It uh, never got made. Then he wrote it into a novel. Anyway, but the, we, that's, well, and, we should and, do our and, own podcast on yeah, that. Yeah, we, we could. But the, the, the reality is, and this is somebody said this to me once, and I, it's always stuck with me, is everybody's a different shaped container. So no matter how much content you take from somebody else's container to put in yours, it can't help but be a different shape because now it's going through the, the container of your interpretation. And so what we get with It Follows, it is not a um, John Carpenter movie. It is this director's movie. It's his vision. It's his story. But you can see 
some of the influence from some Carpenter in it, and I think that in very good ways. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the cinematography, the way they capture the suburb, the way the the long lenses, I mean, not the yeah. long lenses, the wide... Um, yeah, the very or, wide the very wide shots. shots. Yeah. So the, the cinematography, Mike Jalakis, uh, the, the DP, one of the things that... Among the, the things that we just mentioned, but one of the things that makes it special is the cinematography within the movie. And you could tell he was heavily influenced like Carpenter, in particular Halloween. Yeah. And one of the things that Carpenter does well with Halloween is the threat can be on the screen and he doesn't care if you notice or not. Sometimes, yeah. you know, and yep. so whenever you go back, I mean, you know, it's like it was the first time I saw in the daytime Mike Myers, you remember he was standing by the bush just randomly. So yep. once you have a few of those moments or driving by in the car and when she's like, hey, slow down, and he like hits the brakes. So what you start to do as a viewer watching it is you start to scour the screen. You start to scour and actively look. Yeah. And that's what this It Follows does really well is that there are moments where in the background, like the old lady walking towards the school and, and uh, certain things like that. So the cinematography, I mean, even that opening scene was so powerful, right? And then when, you, you know, when she runs out and it's circling around her and then she goes back in the house and comes back out and then there's the, the family if, uh, with the groceries. And so they're, the, the family with the groceries, their reaction is kind of telling you the story of like, you know, okay, this is the middle of the day. She's running out. She's being weird, but they know her, you know, and then the dad comes out and then she, you know, she jumps in the car and she drives away. So it's just well done. But I, when I went on IMDb, I realized I work with this DP. Uh, we did this short called Baby Bleed Together. And I remember uh, I did it with my uh, really good friend, Chad Faust, who wrote um, and directed it, who's gone on to do great things. And we were all, you know, doing these things in, in Hollywood and, and we did this short film called Baby Bleed and I remember watching it and being like, Jesus Christ, this thing is like really well done and it's, you know, come to find out the big talent on this guy, right. uh, Mike. And, you know, he's gone on to work with M-Line on a lot of his movies. He worked on Us with Jordan Peele. So he's gone on to do like these really great, great stuff and great things and I think this movie was his big break because he shines in it, you know, right. and there's a lot of that Carpenter Halloween um, expression through the film. Well, and but it, with his own with his own stamp on it as well. I mean, he de he's definitely not just aping Carpenter. He's got his own style as oh, well. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that's it, it all goes yeah. back to the point yeah. that we were making earlier. You know, it's just like with, Carpenter just happens to be a thing that we love. So we're like, oh, we get a sense of that. We get a feel yeah. of that. But it's not. You know, they're not well, taking it from. And, those and on your on your point about you know you start scouring the screen. Part of what he does with the cinematography and and part of what the director is doing here, which I really admire about the storytelling is in a way the camera puts us in the same position that the people in the movie are because you never know what the thing is going to look like mm -hmm. and so they're always in the position where once they realize what's going on they're always scanning around which one of which one of these people is just walking right toward me with no expression on the face that must be the monster right that's the yeah. position they're in but we as the audience also wind up in that position because once we understand how it is, every time we get one of those wide shots, we're looking, is there anybody walking toward them with no expression on their face? So in a way, they, they, put, they put us in the role of one of the victims as well, where we're constantly scouring everything around us to see if something is behaving unusually, and that must be the monster. It's, right. really, yeah. it's really well done. So, yeah, it really adds to the tension. And, you know, the score, the parallel universe, the... The, the cinematography, the performances, everything, the writing, and it's so rich and so complex, and it's about something. It just really adds to, it, it's, it's a fantastic film. One of the things that I wanted to talk about, though, is the, the monster itself, right? Because yeah. I, I kind of read online, like, people are like, well, it's not a perfect movie, you know, the monster. So I disagree with that, because a lot of the rules that we get about the monster come from Hugh. Yeah. I don't remember. That's even his fake name. And Hugh is, it's just what he learned and how to survive. He's not the authority on this monster. And I think this monster is governed more by nightmare logic. And, you know, they have some guidelines that it kind of follows through and kind of things that are similar. But I think that it's more about the torture of their victim in, in many ways, like the faces that they take on, the presence that they take on. 
I think that slow walk constantly moving towards them is the anxiety and the torture that it puts in, you know, it's, it's the, it's the hunt, it's the savoring the, the torture within them. And then like, you know, people are like, why is the dude, the naked dude with his dick out standing on the roof as they're driving away? And I'm like, because it's fucking terrifying. That's her dad. You know, that's her dad up there on the roof. And the fact that they don't see it means that that presence is always there. And yes, they might walk towards them because people are like, why didn't they get in a plane and fly to another place or whatever? First of all, you're going to live your life, you know, in, in complete and total fear, you know, with, because you never know when it's going to eventually catch up to you. But I don't think it operates like that. I think because they drove like 100 miles out of the city to go to Greg's lake house and it was there the next day. So I think it's more about who that person is specifically and how to torture them specifically. That's the reason why she showed up as Greg's mom. By the way, there's something going on with moms because what I noticed <laughs> in the rewatching is that the naked lady in the, that, that shows up when, when, when Hugh is explaining to Jay about the rules and everything, that lady that shows up is his mom. Uh, when she, really? How do you know that? Yeah, because when they go to her house, uh, when they find Hugh and they go to his house and his mom answers the door, you look and you're like, that's the naked lady in the beginning of the, in the, beginning of the thing. <laughs> So what is wow. it with, you know, you look at that and you're like, wait, wh- so what is it with torturing these guys with, you know, and, yeah. and that was the most terrifying death when Greg died, when he's like, and he's like, you know, I'm trying to sleep, mom. And he opens up the door and she just fucking jumps on him and is like, like fucking him and just like, just like oozing semen all over him. And like, you know, and then you look and then he, he dies and his thing it's like, oh my God, it's like terrifying. Yeah. His mom was pretty hot. So I guess it wasn't that bad. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um so what what do you think of the the, mo- the to me the nightmare logic behind the monster th- that it's that it's slightly inconsistent and that it almost it seems smarter in some ways and then not in other ways and the fact that you can shoot it and kind of slow it down all that's really interesting to me it it throws some people off i find that to to make it way more mysterious i well and, I, for me i think the thing that excuses all of it and makes it all, I think, of a piece rather than it. I don't think it's inconsistent. I think it's one thing. And I think that one thing is the moment this thing starts, we are in a nightmare is dream logic, right? And the, the fact that I didn't know this until you told me, but the fact that the writer director based this on a dream he had makes a lot of sense to me because even just watching the movie without knowing that, it definitely felt like we were in dream logic. As you said, the, the timelessness of it. What time period does it take place? And there's no way to really latch onto that. You know, what, why are the things happening that are happening? There's never an explanation. There is just, these are the things that are happening. And when you're in a dream, when you're in a nightmare, you never question the reality of the nightmare. But there's, there's no explanation for why the things are happening the way they are, right? And that's how this movie works. Like, they never right. question that it's real. Obviously, it's real. <laughs> because yeah. that's how a nightmare works. But yeah. the, the logic of why and, and how it all works and what the rules are, that's, that's made up. That's dream logic, right? And it, that yeah, never bothered me. You mean to tell me, like, all of us have dreams <laughs> with our dads on the roof with their cock out, all right? That's like something we all dream about, right? <laughs> I've never had that particular one. <laughs> no, not, not one I haven't had. I've had, I've had some fucked right, up Joseph, dreams with my had, parents. But. Wait, that's not just me, right? It's like other people, right? <laughs> When I saw that, I was like, he gets me. <laughs> I think that might just be you. I, yeah, I saw your mind like doing your, the math. Your dad, like, your dad was clearly an important uh, person in your, in your life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but I do think it's interesting that the, the, the mother characters, like that yeah. you know, Oedipus kind of situation where, you know, that where the lady that was coming after Hugh was his mother. And then the lady that's coming after Greg, the person that Greg sees, is his mother. Well, and it's also, it's, you know, we were talking about the, the metaphor of the movie as, as the end of childhood, right? The mm-hmm. end of childhood is the recognition that you will someday yeah. die. The other Be- end of because, childhood. Because when you fuck your mother, you are no longer a child. You're no longer a child. <laughs> you, the, you, that the, is the, that's the crossing. Into- 
But the <laughs> other end, no, it's okay. The other end of childhood is your parents are no longer going to save you, yeah. right? Once you become yeah. an adult, your parents stop saving you. Yeah. And so the monster taking on the aspect of the parents as the threat to kill them, I, that, I think that fits in very well with that metaphor. Yeah. What's, in, the, it, what's interesting to me is, so Jay passes this thing off to Greg first. And Greg is basically Greg doesn't believe in it. Right. And so Greg's taking the the it follows from her is different to me than Paul because Greg doesn't believe in it. And I think it's a, it's a little bit like, well, you know, you're, you're having sex with her because you're going to do this thing, but you don't really believe in it. It just seems a little wrong. Right. Yeah. And then you you're can look at it and say, of the situation. you're taking advantage of the situation because he's in the room and he's like, all right, I'll take it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But he, but he, it's clear after the fact, he's like, I don't, I don't fucking like, you know, he goes to me and she goes, how's he doing? She's, she's upset. And he's like, you know, he doesn't believe in it. Now you can look at it and say, maybe he thinks that this is the one thing that'll comfort her. You know, this is the one thing that'll I think, comfort her. I think, I think if you bone somebody that you think is mentally ill, or has yeah. a delusion. I, I, I don't think that's a good thing. I don't, I don't think you're the good guy in that situation. Yeah. So yeah. there's, you know, it, it, like I see that and I'm like, there's just something wrong. You know, there's just something's not right with yeah. it because after the fact, he's like, yeah, I don't really believe it. And I'm like, well, then why did you? Yeah. You that's know, taking what, advantage. You know, yeah. 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 That's been taking me. But Paul, bless his little fucking heart, he knows. You know, he saw that, that that great scene on the beach when that pulls up her hair. Yeah, and then and I and I love that it did this because he hit it with a chair and then it attacked him. So now you know it, it is it can attack, you know, humans. And I don't know if that's whether the humans attack them. It can attack other people that aren't in this line. Right. But it's dead set and focused on the person that's in the line. Right. Right. And so that kind of makes it a bit more terrifying to me. Yep. But Paul has seen this thing. He knows it's there and everything, and he still takes it. That is puppy love at its strongest force. Did you have, did you have crushes on anybody that you would have taken that thing for? I mean, like if when, I was, Caves, when, I was, when I was like 14, you uh-huh. could have told me that 10 minutes after you had sex with me, I was going to explode, and I still would have done it. <laughs> I mean, when you're 14, it don't matter. Consequences are irrelevant. If Phoebe Case in Fast Times at Richmond High came up to me and was like, listen, you know, I got this thing that follows me and it's going to come. And I'm like, you know, I'm cool. Like, what? Like, let's rock and roll. Let's go. Like, she'd be like, no, no, it's going to. I get it. I get it. I get yeah. it. I get it, Phoebe. You know, we're can, good. Can, we're good. can we yeah, move I'm on not, to the sex now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bring that fucking thing on. And then when the thing came at me, I'd be like, it was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> it was worth it. Now, this is kind of fun to think about it. What would you do in that situation if you were in that situation? Um, I would go to a uh, whorehouse. And I would have sex with every single person in the warehouse to spread the love around, buy myself a little time. And I know that makes me a terrible person because <laughs> sex workers do not deserve to be murdered for being sex workers. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a Puritan. I don't think sex workers deserve to be murdered. Uh, but, you know, if you're going to throw up a smoke screen, that seems like the way to go. So there's a, in the script, this was in the script and they took it out in the movie and I wish they didn't because it, it to me, it, it, it's more effective. So Jay, after the attack at the lake, when they're at the lake house, anyway, Jay walks out to the lake and there's a bunch of guys on the boat drinking beer. Mm. Right. And in the movie, she t- undresses, she gets in the water and she swims out toward them. And then you hard cut and then you see her and she's wet and she's crying in her room. Right. And so then you have this horrible image of like her giving herself over to those guys, which right. always was dissettling to me. But in the script, she swims out there, gets close to the guys, and she's like, I can't, I can't do this, I can't do it. And then she swims under the water, and then she's under the water for a long time, like, is she going to kill herself, is she not going to kill herself? And then she pops up, and she's swimming back to shore, Mm. right? Which is like, you know, the metaphor of like, okay, I'm going to get control and do this. And I liked that better, because I didn't... Because then, number one, there's like this morality that she has that separates her from Hugh. Right. She's not going to um, just hand it off to somebody who doesn't know yes, and let them get killed. Yes, that doesn't know. Yeah. Right. And so 
everybody she hands it off to, they they've they're like, let me take this. Like we're in it together. Right. We're gonna work whatever. But it, it it made her different than you, and so the like the image of these guys and whatever. I like the 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 cho- I like the struggling with the choice, but I liked. I think they should have kept it in where she didn't because it separates her from Hugh and the other people like that. Yeah. And I thought about it too, and I and I think if you think about it, you'll come to the same conclusion because I I thought I think about it a lot actually, kind of embarrassingly a lot. <laughs> but at the end of the like, I thought about you know just catching a plane to here and there and everything, you know. But I think at the end of the day, I think I would just let it kill me. Really? Be- yeah, because I couldn't live with doing it to somebody else. And then I, and I also couldn't live with like all, like my anxiety. Like I could not, either I would just say, fuck it. And I'm going to live life. Like, you know, like I'm going to travel and I'm going to have a good time, but you can't have sex with anybody. You know, that sucks. So, you know, I, I, I know I wouldn't pass it off. I know I wouldn't be able to, to live with that. Yeah, I think my idea works because uh, you, you go to a, a, a bordello, they're going to be having sex with other people other than you. Those people are going to, I mean, like you're, 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 it's way down the line, you know? And, yeah, I, th- I, and I here's think that's a thing. smart idea. Here's the thing. If you let it kill you, it just goes and kills the person who gave it to you. So it's, you're not saving anybody. You're just sending it the other direction rather than sending it forward. You're sending it backward, but it's still yeah, going to go on and kill somebody else. But you're not killing anybody. You're yeah, not responsible I, yeah. for anybody's I've death. Always been wanted, I've and always think, wanted to be responsible for multiple deaths. <laughs> <laughs> or you know what? You could just target people that you hate, yeah. you know, or people that need to go. So you just hate you know fucking what I'm somebody. Saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You just target. You're the you know, worst. Let me, actually, let me rethink this. Let me just find the worst people on the planet and fuck them right you know uh yeah that actually be you know we should do a movie with like somebody's like an it follows assassin and they have this thing and so we get them to go sleep with like high powerful assholes or and or, or go to and prison and, 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 and blow everybody in the aryan nation <laughs> yeah. and just but watch I think the that, whole white supremacist gangs getting wiped out just get just just get <laughs> You know, but I think that, yeah, it, it's interesting to think about because it, then it goes line. So they, there's a, there was actually talk at one point of a sequel mm. and the sequel would be, you flip the title where it follows it and where Jay would go back, would follow the thing all the way through and try to select the original curse. I don't know how that would work, but mm. that's kind of like what they were talking about or who, where it came from. You know, okay. but it, I mean that then you're going back to biblical times, right? right? Like that was probably something going around. Like that was probably, <laughs> you know, this is an ancient thing that's happening. But one of the things that, uh, that I took from there that was really valuable is that he, so at that time, obviously wine was a status symbol, having the best wine, the best. And he says the time that we're preoccupied with wine with all with pos- all possessions and kind of goes through each thing yeah. and the amount of money and status and everything, it's all rotting grapes. Yeah. At the end of the day, and then that really struck me is like everything: every, the new car, the new this, the every it's all rotting grapes. It is all it will all be dissolved back into the soil at some point. Yeah, but I as an Epicurean, that's okay because I'm enjoying it in the moment I'm in right now. <laughs> and you enjoy it, yeah. You're enjoying it in the moment you're in right now, and you're not hoarding. You're not. Yeah, I mean, there's. You know, you're yeah, not, you're exactly. not basing your identity and your sense of happiness on external things. Well, I assume anyway. I assume your happiness is based on your like fleet of Lamborghinis, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, I think uh, I think we bored the audience enough. We, we we veered into philosophy, which we we should we could do a Marcus Aurelius podcast and, at and some point. The, and the one and the ones of people who show up for the. The discussion Marcus about Aurelius Marcus Aurelius. <laughs> <laughs> you know, me, you, Steve, and Steven. It'll be Steven. Yeah, one. it'll be Steven's the yeah, only person yeah, who'll yeah. show up for that. Yeah, Steven will show up. Me, you, and Steven will do that because that's uh, Steven and I's favorite topic of conversation. But anyway, Joseph, we ready to go through our fun little thing? Simply the best. <laughs> better than all the rest. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Simply the best. All righty. So, guys. Best performance from an actor in this? Who 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 gets it? Uh, Mika Monroe. Yeah, I think we both like. I think we both like Jay. Is uh, what would you say was the best line? Or, or the guy with his oh. cock out on the roof? <laughs> 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 Rocking the cock out. Yeah. 
What would you guys say was the best line or something quotable? Mm. Well, they quote Dostoevsky in this and everything. That guy's a pure genius. So everything he says is uh, pure, pure gold. Which is um, funny. Some, uh, on a best of list of this movie, that was one of the things that they said. They're like, wait, this movie actually quoted that. Yeah. <laughs> Already best death. Oh, oh I, I like, you, you go first, Ty. I, I still think, okay, so obviously the, the, the mother murdering the kid in bed is a pretty good one. But I still think the, the most shocking death to me is the girl on the beach. Yeah, yeah. The, and, the, and it's off yeah. screen. Yeah. And I think sometimes the yep. aftermath of the death the was more jarring is than so shocking and so horrific. Yeah, already best jump scare: tall guy or little boy? Oh, <laughs> tall guy walking in <laughs> behind her sister. I was like, "What the fuck?" And the yeah. thing is, is that guy is so goddamn big that he's like gigantic, and he's got like dark holes in his eyes. Yeah. Oh, also another thing too is like. Most of the, the ghosts that show up, it's like they're victims of another sex crime. You know, mm. like they're like the girl walking in the in the kitchen and she's like her shirt's ripped open and she's peeing herself and she's right. wet and, you know, black eyes and bruised. And so it's like all these victims of sex crimes that are coming back. Well, I think Ty already said the best rando to pass the curse on to, which would be going to the whorehouse. Yeah, you, you want to give it to somebody who's immediately going to give it to somebody else. <laughs> Bingo. Well, and th th that's pretty easy. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Or you give it to somebody that you don't like. <laughs> well, I like Just I like Wes. I like Wes's idea sex. of going to prison and blowing all the Aryan <laughs> Aryan Brotherhood guys. <laughs> that is a good. I, one. I think. I, I think. I, I think hold on. That. Here's. <laughs> Here's, I don't ever want to hear that sentence ever again. I like Wes's idea of going to prison and blowing all the area guys. Like, that's, strike that from the record, and I don't want that out hey, into the world. But Wes, instead of just letting it kill you, I mean, think of all the good you could do yeah. by blowing dick. Yeah. But I don't think it comes from blowing. I think you got to do some sex. fucking. Hey, any sex. Yeah, I don't think. I mean, blowing dick. Like, what? You, this is gross. Like, move on. All right. Best red shirt in in this movie was there a red shirt guy or girl like you, you mean so. that you know they're gonna die you just know they're gonna die i mean it'd probably be the opening girl right it's like the well nah. well you she know she's already marked die. she was already marked but then yeah, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know if, i don't know if this movie has a particular red nah. shirt yeah yeah okay best what the fuck moment greg's mom fucking him to death yeah. <laughs> I agree Agreed. with that. Yeah, that, that's, <laughs> it's tough I'm to argue like, that what? one. What? Yeah. yeah, and then you're like, oh, I mean, it's not too bad. And I then, mean, the fact, though, that he's angry that his mom is knocking on the door. <laughs> but mom, I'm trying to sleep. <laughs> with her tits hanging out. He you doesn't mom, go, mom, you, don't, you never appreciated me. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Um, okay. In the best use of nudity. I think we all agree it's the guy standing on the roof. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Dad, just, yeah. just yeah. dad standing on the roof, yeah. just <laughs> flapping in the breeze. <laughs> Joseph yeah, was a stand in for that. <laughs> <laughs> he was a stand in before he was a producer extraordinaire. Uh, there we go. Yeah. All right. That wraps that up. And we will move on to, in regards to its follows, the patrons would like to know. First off, would necrophilia end the curse, AKA the final destination? That's a solution. good. That's a good. That's a really good idea. I don't know. You'd have to take a shot. You'd have to take a shot at I it. Mean, I think I think your daughter is standing behind you, listening to you talk about necrophilia <laughs> right now, Joseph. Uh, thankfully, she's fine. Okay. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, good. like, like, look. I think we can all agree that most problems are solved by fucking a corpse. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think we all agree. Hey, hey, I want to <laughs> know what I want to know what would happen if if she fucked who who again. Like, does it send it back his way? Oh, like, is it a circle? Yeah. yeah. Like, can you fuck back up the line? Yeah. I don't know. Good, That's a good question. That'd be the That's good. That's why he the, was the, like, get away from me. Yeah. That'd get be the good sequel is like, you, you fuck back up the line, and then the person that originated, if he dies, then it cuts everything off. It's like cutting the head off the snake. All righty. Okay. Um, Ty kind of answered this, but I think it's dependent upon age. On a scale of one to 10, how horny would you have to be? To go for it, knowing that the curse was going to be passed. Uh, like, like fourteen year old me would not have thought twice. Yep, that's what I thought. Well, I mean, if Monica Bellucci, or, or, uh, <laughs> you know, there you like, go. Hey, if she shows up and it's like, can you help me? I'm like, hey. shut your mouth. Yeah. Which goes to another question: the entity takes the shape 
of a nude Monica Bellucci. Yeah, I'm, Run I'm, or go I'm, a, for I'm it. a goner. <laughs> I'm a don. I'm a goner. I'm like, come for me, it follows. Come for me. <laughs> <laughs> what Man, about you, Ty? That, that would Ty? You see that would be the greatest humiliation. Is the it follows demon ghost? Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna <laughs> I'll find somebody else. You know, wait, what what about you? Even the it follows demon doesn't want to sleep with me. <laughs> what about you, Ty? Naked Monica Belushi shows up. Are you? Uh, are you gonna? I, so I have, I have been married a long time, a very long time, uh, and I have and I, 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 and and I have had multiple temptations, and thus far. I have resisted every temptation that has come my way. I think I think I'm pretty solid. I think I'd be able to turn no, it down. So hold on, Ty. Okay, all right. Way to fucking make me like it. I'm married too, motherfucker. This is not a. <laughs> this is the hypothetical as if hypothetical. like you were like you were in a situation. Not so not, not married, of course, but you know what's going to happen. Yes, okay. yes. Then, That's what yes. the, the then, fucking then def- thing is. Then definitely, here, Monica Bellucci could could tempt me to risk that. Because here's the thing, I've. I'm happily married yeah. and I, you know, and I, I would, you know, so Monica, no, but if I, if, if the question is to see if you would take that thing on because yeah. it's the neck and Monica Belushi, then yeah, do it. But I would never do anything to harm. And it's like, why the fuck do you make me explain this? Ty? Ty, the other version of this it's the question hypothetical thing is, is the life force babe. If she's oh. coming to you and you know that she's going to uh, <laughs> suck your life force. What, yeah, yeah. Like, what, uh, what, uh, what is her name? Uh, I forget her name. Like, yeah, yeah. No, yes. Yeah. I, yeah, I saw that movie when I was young enough that it actually changed my sexuality. Yeah. Yeah, that, <laughs> that, that, that established <sighs> my sexual preferences for the rest of my life, <laughs> watching that movie. Yeah. All righty. So the last question. In the Expanse Universe... Will it follow into space? Like, yeah, how's you know, it going to walk on the space? Razorback? How is it going to walk through space? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, what would suck is if you were on a on a ship and it just showed up on was, the ship. Where are you going to go? Right? Yeah, and you're like, <laughs> yeah. fuck, man. Well, yeah. the, but then that'll solve it. Just take an escape pod, get on another ship, and then good luck catching you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you just have an, a naked old lady, like a naked old lady, and it falls just like in space, like ah! <laughs> just randomly <laughs> headed somewhere. You know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that wraps it up, and now we're on to the top five, which is... Oh, that uh, wasn't the West... top five? Well, wow. No, we that have, was not the we top have, five. We, we've radically changed the format of this show. Mm. Yes. So we have... Uh, this was a suggestion from West. Worst consequences for having sex. This is a tough one within movies. Yeah, so yeah, there's, maybe not, there's not a ton. No, no, there, there, but... there, there are plenty. The, the, but they were largely in horror movies. Right, yeah, very yeah. true. So, fatal attraction number one. Going back to what Ty was saying earlier, fatal attraction will keep everybody loyal to their their spouses. Okay, and look, I, I, I that's always a movie that's baffled me because Glenn Close is an amazing actor. I've always loved her as an actor. Um, don't you do it, but Ty. he was You're married get, to Ann Archer. Don't, don't you fucking do it. You're gonna get hate <laughs> all right. over you. They're gonna, they're gonna hate all over you. <laughs> if you are married um, to Ann Archer, what are you doing, dude? Just stay home. Yeah, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Othello, she didn't actually sleep with the guy, but Iago framed him with the scarf. So Othello, like, you know, they didn't actually have sex. Right. So is that, is that the thing or is that, is that, is it because, you know, he ended up killing her Yeah. I, and then. I don't, I don't think Othello ahead. belongs on this list because it is not a consequence of having, it's consequence of having an asshole best friend who fucks you over for no reason. I, I, I would have to say I think Oh God, deliverance. Uh no, I see I, I think I think Old Boy belongs way up at the top of this list. Have you seen yeah. Old Boy? I have not seen Old Boy. Oh, oh yeah, it's oh, brutal. So and I'm talking and I'm not I'm, I'm talking the original. Not the American I'm talking one. the original. But yeah, that that one was that is a brutal, brutal setup. Now are we talking are we talking uh, the piranha that has uh uh shit, what's that actor's name? Um he's married to uh uh, uh, Jerry Connolly. Yeah, yeah, Jerry Connolly. Is, is it that one where the piranha bites his but, dick off? But that he wasn't having sex in that. I saw another clip from Piranha yeah. where a dude, it was just right on his member and he had a, a knife, but I couldn't remember it. Uh, so I was like going to delete it. Okay. But yeah. did you, you guys. have you guys ever seen a world, the world according to Garp? Yeah. yeah. And she was blowing that dude in the car and then <laughs> they got rear ended and she bit his dick off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that that would be definitely good to one. me. That was the most. I mean, in the book, it was. Are you a John Irving fan, Ty? 
Um, I've read John Irving. I, I don't know that I go way out of my way to read all of John man, Irving. Man, the world according to Garth, that book, man. Oh my God. Like the, the way that he talks about, how, oh, yeah, that's oh. Jennifer's body. I thought, you know, where, where you, you get to have sex with the super hot girl, but then uh, just as you get started, she turns into a demon. And he needs you. You know, that's, um, that sucks. I, I will agree. So cabin fever is still Eli Ross best movie. And uh, I, I have to agree that the, the scene where he's finally getting to sleep with the super hot girl that he's had a huge crush on, and then the camera moves around behind her and you can see the like horrible open sores on her back, that's, yeah. pretty, that's pretty brutal. Pretty that's brutal. the shining. Oh, the, yeah, I, the I, shining, the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Jack, I, I would put that on this list, the shining with Jack Nicholson yeah. in the tub. I would put it yeah. over Cabin Fever yeah. when he's making out with her. Yeah. Oh, God, that was... <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that one's pretty brutal. Johnny, dangerously, your testicles and you. I mean, that one's just funny. <laughs> it's, hey, it's a it's a worst case consequence. Yeah, that's, for that one's funny. Too though. much sex. Yeah. I think we got five. What's yeah? We do. You forgot about you forgot about Bruce Willis. Die you hard. Know, what? Well, yeah. I mean, like, see, wait, wait. Die well, hard. The consequence is is uh. What's his face wanting sex? No, 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 no. The, there wife. is there is actually a scene in Die Hard that fits with this. It is the couple having sex in the office. It's the one nude scene in the movie where they the uh-huh. terrorists break in and she goes running out oh. without her top on. So yeah. you're, you're having sex in an office and terrorists take over the building that you're in. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, that's like a legit bad. number one. And, and you and you bad don't even get to finish because terrorists interrupt <laughs> mid. That's what mid- ma- that's what makes it a horror. That's what makes it a horror story. Yeah. Like if you get I, to finish, okay, you go with God. But like if you don't get to finish and they come in there. I, I still like deliverance that you find out that your mouth is pretty and you are good squealing like a pig. Oh God, I can't, I can't, I can't. What about what about getting fired on your break in Roadhouse? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. He, oh, it's all brain. He, 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 isn't he in like the the cooler or something? Or he's inside the. He's in the closet. He's, he's oh, in the. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it's like some kind of the, back little room. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, in the back room. I was on break. Uh, all the crates are. I was on my break. Uh. <laughs> and uh, you definitely, sh- you definitely should include on the list. Should be um, uh, the movie about the alien chick who sex your life force. Uh, life force. Yeah, uh, you should definitely include oh. life force. I forgot about Life yeah. Force. Gosh, that is definitely an honorable mention. Yep. Now, uh, have you? I I don't know if Wes, have you seen it? But Ty, have you seen Audition? I have. Now that's that's some serious consequences for wanting. That's some sex. serious consequences for trying to get laid. Yes, attempt yeah. to get laid, dude, and have somebody saw your foot off, dude. Wait till you see. Uh, talk about well, I haven't finished Gangland, but you talk about some some sex in that. You're like, whoa, I haven't, this has been a long time since a movie like this. Oh, you know, the other movie that should be on this list is, um, is X. Have you seen X? Mm-mm. Yeah, that's, that, that entire movie is people getting horribly murdered after they have sex. Yeah, you, you should watch it. It's a good it's one. It's a good one. It's, it is. It's a good one. Well, thank you guys for hanging out. Please like, subscribe, and ring that little bell. We love you. This was a great time. We hope to see you again. We hope you um, do not please. get murdered after having sex. Yeah, I hope. The It Follows line does not follow you after you have sex. I hope you're having responsible sex <laughs> and with somebody you really care about because it's important. Thank you, Bata. I, I feel like that was like a, a PSA. Like, like I was going to yeah. say a PSA. Yeah, it was very, PSA for tying that guy. It was, it was very, and now I want to go all G.I. Joe. Now you know, yeah. and knowing is half the battle. <laughs> half the battle. Goodbye, Ty.